posted a video about how I've become a highly productive dentist, and one of the comments on that video absolutely floored me. General dentists producing $300,000 a month personally. I thought to myself, whoa, if production numbers like this are possible, this must be one heck of a practice. Dr. Morcos ended up reaching out to me via Instagram, and the numbers for his practice were even more mind-blowing than I thought. For an eight-figure practice. In this video, I'm gonna distill down everything that I learned in a one-hour conversation with Kiro and bring that tactical advice to you. If you want to learn strategies to increase your productivity, have your office run more effectively using systems, and increase your case acceptance, all from a dentist currently working an eight-figure practice, you don't want to miss this one. Hi friends, if you're new to the channel, I'm Joel, I'm a dentist, and I'm also an executive at bootcamp.com. I make videos to help you along your dental journey. So starting at the beginning of Kiro's dental journey, he finished dental school in 2015, which is the same year that I graduated. I started doing like 70, 80 uh, a month trying to expand my skills, just trying to get better and faster and be more efficient. Not too far along into this position, his wife, a medical doctor, accepts a residency in Houston. So they end up moving from Oklahoma to Texas. And then this opportunity came up in McKinney. He receives an email from the company about this new position in McKinney. And although this was going to be his third move, he saw a lot of opportunity and he decided to jump on it. And this is the first lesson. Life you can't control and sometimes the wind will blow you one way or the other. But luck is when opportunity meets preparation. And Kira was prepared for this new role because of what he had done beforehand. His skill set and his personality set him up to seize this new opportunity. And the opportunity for Kiro here was big. It's, it's a big, pretty big office. We have 65 employees. So for reference, I have a very busy practice and there's 10 of us total. Me, two hygienists, two assistants, and four receptionists. Kiro's practice has approximately six times the number of individuals that my practice does. And managing this number of people is a monstrous job. When you go from 10 people in an office to 20, it's not two times the amount of coordination, it's about 10 times. So I can only imagine the type of systems that they have to have in place to have an office of 65 different individuals function like a well-oiled machine. So when Kiro took this job, he knew that eventually there'd be an opportunity for him to be a productive dentist. But he originally went there to learn because because the senior dentists in this practice were impressive. I went to interview there, I was like, man, I'll, I'll follow you around. I will polish your fillings, I don't care. I wanna be here and just learn from you guys because the money will come, like who cares? But just getting these guys who are top of their game to, to teach me. And while I won't share the exact numbers for this practice, Kiro shared these numbers with me privately and I can vouch that this is a truly one of a kind practice in terms of how it runs and what these doctors are producing. A bunch of people interviewed for that position. So I asked Kiro how he set himself apart. Obviously they wanted to look at metrics. You could at least do this amount that you're good enough to do that. And then he said, we could train you dentistry no matter what, you can't train somebody personality and culture, you know, that drive. And you know, it's the same at my practice. The dentist I am today is very different than the dentist I was when I first accepted the position that I'm in now. But the dentist that employed me saw that I was above a certain threshold of capability and knew that I was the type of person that was going to grow and evolve as a dentist and get better to be the type of high producing and effective dentist that I am today. And Kira identified that in this practice, they were going to help him to become successful. I got the vibe that they were legit interested in my success and that's why I went there. So Kira starts and he's learning and he's growing and his numbers are increasing. And I asked him, how are the doctors, including you at this office, so productive? There's this myth out there that in order to be so productive, you must be rushing or skipping steps, but that's not the case. We try to treat our patients like our family. I asked Kiro, what are the keys to being highly productive while still being a good dentist? And the foundation is clinical fundamentals. And he talked about how in order to become a more competent clinical dentist, he started off going slow in order to eventually go fast. In the beginning, you're just slowing down completely and trying to get everything perfect. What I did with wisdom teeth, for example, in the beginning, I would get a scalpel, maybe not cut all the way through, come back and cut again. So those little things made me a lot slower. But when I slow down and say, I'm gonna pick up this 15 blade, let me do it perfectly. And besides clinical technique, knowing the proper order of operations so that you can be efficient. I would take the scalpel, do the upper, and cut the lower at the same time. That way I don't have to touch the scalpel again on that side. But beyond just being fast, you have to set your practice up for efficiencies. And you do so with systems. We don't rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. Most importantly, it's the systems in place because no matter how fast I am, if we can't get people in the chair, if the assistants don't know what they're doing exactly and helping me, 
then it, there's no success. It's all about efficiencies. Hero's Office has systems for everything, and they track how they're doing so they know how they can improve. You can only manage what you measure, and Hero's Office tracks, for example, case acceptance, so they can see how they're doing relative to how they did before, and if changes and improvements are actually impacting how they're educating patients. You can be as productive as you want, but... If there's no patient in the chair, it doesn't matter. And Kiro's the first to admit that he wasn't very effective at helping patients to understand and buy into a certain treatment at the beginning of his career. First year, I saw my case acceptance was like 10, 15%, which is terrible, maybe because my confidence wasn't there, my skill set wasn't there, and just confidence in myself. And case acceptance is hard. At my office, I largely do bread and butter dentistry, and it's a lot easier when something is very black and white. If you have a large cavity, you need to get it filled. If you have a bombed out tooth, it has to be removed. It's not really optional treatment, like it is, for example, to just restore a tooth again versus putting a crown on it, or to leave a space versus doing a dental implant. With these more optional treatments, case presentation and case acceptance really does matter. And Kiro says that he has gotten better at this with time. Now we're at last month was 42% case acceptance rate on like crowns and implants or whatever. I asked him for his secrets. He said partly it's about helping to make a dental condition and the proposed treatment options understandable. I try to focus on communication uh, with the patient in layman's terms, what I'm trying to say. But it's not just him. Especially being as busy as he is, it takes a village and he relies and leans on his team to help him in this process. It's not only me, it's my team as well. So they're very good at talking and explaining to the patients what I need to do because like we're saying, if, if we're super busy, you have to rely on your team members to do the heavy lifting. And his office is really big on dental photography and helping patients to understand what's going on inside their mouths. When they have a photo up there, in high quality where they see a broken tooth and kind of in the arch, they could tell that's my left side, isn't it? Yeah, that's sharp. You know, I want to fix that. In just six short years, Kiro has become a top percentile dental producer. And I asked him, how was this possible? The most important thing is to chase mentors and, and knowledge. The more you see people at a higher level doing their things, the procedures, the better you will get and the production will come after. I know I'm a high producer and I'm super busy, but if, if I'm not in a room, I'm in one of their rooms and just learning. So I, I wanna do more surgeries. So I'm always in the surgical room. And he, he's very open, Dr. Lynch is, to just, hey, look at here. And he'll sometimes call me on the microphone. Hey, come here, I wanna show you something. In the middle of surgery, so I'll go and, and, and check it out. So that's kind of the, the thing. And again, he's, he's very interested in my success. So we have a, a big day coming up where there's five immediate implants and wisdom teeth and all that, where he's coming on his day off just to be there with me because I'm doing a few things that I'm not I haven't done before. So immediate molar implants, I've done immediate premolars, and he's just taking the time to, to come and show me uh, and just be with me in case I need it. But in spite of all his successes, Kiro does still remain so humble. Know that there's a lot we don't know and to try to learn from every single person. When I was in Oklahoma, the person that taught me the most was my hygienist. And I still talk to her to this day and we kind of laugh about it, but I try to learn from everybody I talk to, whether that's uh, an assistant, a hygienist or what, you just learn. If you have a negative situation that happened or a you're in a bad position, try to learn something, try to see how you can grow from that. Try to do everything in your power to get better. I think some of the best ways to get better at dentistry and run a more effective practice is to listen to the advice of someone else who's already been there. And Kiro was one of those people for me. And I actually have a ton of material from this conversation, which I didn't get into in this video, about managing an office, about leadership, retaining staff, and how to organize so many different people. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you know when the future video with Kiro comes out. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see how I tripled my earnings as a dentist, check out this video that I made here. Make sure you hit like. It does a lot to support me as a creator, and I'll see you in the next one.